Hi everybody, my name is Jason Morgan, I'm an artist, welcome into my studio. I know a lot of you have been following me on my social media channels and seen me complete very recently this um, snow leopard. Now that full tutorial is about four and a half hours long and I really go into a lot of detail. But on this tutorial I want to look at just one area, the snow leopard's ear, and really go into detail on that and show you a few um, areas. Perhaps if you're new with pastels you may have a few stumbling blocks and I can show you exactly how I do a very detailed section. So just before we start here, I'm just showing a little clip out of the full length video so you can see the kind of detail I reach uh, at the end of those four and a half hours. But let's zoom in now on the ear and really see how I detail that section in particular. Okay, so zoomed right in. Now the main benefit with pastels is that we can easily or fairly easily overlay light tones on top of dark undertones. So as most of you that follow my YouTube channel or my Patreon channel will know, I love the easy option. I'm always looking for um, the easier way around it to, to get and to create that very realistic, very detailed appearance um, with the least amount of work and the fastest time. I've done this whole drawing within around about 15 hours, which is not bad considering the amount of detail and the large size of it. Now obviously I've already done a lot of work on the underlayers, even on this section, and I do most of that with soft pastels or pan pastels in particular. Now the pans are really great, I've got a few other videos on my YouTube channel um, showing how I use pans just to block in and get a base colour tone down. So that's already done, that work's been done, and what I'm doing now, I've got that base there as I said so I know where my major shapes are. I'm using my pastel pencils. This one happens to be Karen Dash just because they've got some lovely dark browns. I've only got perhaps three or four of those pencils. My favourite ones are Carbothello and Pit because they're that bit harder, easier to sharpen. But I'm just darkening areas down. I'm blending at the moment with my finger in that third direction. And you can see I'm leaving the lighter tone areas not so dark. So even though we can overlay light over dark in pastel it's still better not to go too dark underneath if you're putting something very light on top something you want a bit more punchy and the lighter tones in this area are going to be punchy as you'll see later on this is a carbothello pencil and i'm putting in some more of those uh, mid-tone darks and some haze some texture that's actually dark in appearance as well. So this would be the under fur. I'm going to build layer upon layer on this section. Because you've got to remember with this animal, there's lots of layers to the fur. To recreate that, to get that depth, I need to build layers in my pencil work, in my detailed work. And I'm starting with the darker layers, working gradually lighter and lighter on top. And then finally, I'll refine those colors a little bit more right at the very end. So here I'm using a pencil again just to get some of that darker texture in place. And I'm just going to continue doing this. I'm just going to speed this section up until I start to um, overlay more of those lighter tones. Now as I'm putting in these darks, you see the little lines at the bottom as well, I'm not putting always long stroking lines in there. Remember these are the dark tones in between the lighter tones that's going to come at a later stage, at the next stage, and the lighter tones on again. So these are those dark little recesses in between the haze, in between the little clumps of fur. Now 
Now I'm pretty much happy I've gone dark enough. Remember, with pastels we can put light over dark, but we can also put dark back over light. So it's not critical uh, to get every dark in. You can always go back in, but I like to work from a slightly darker undertone, even in the areas that I'm going to put the lights on. Because remember, if there's not a dark underneath, even if it's just slightly darker, the lights won't show up. And that's why you always or almost always see me work on a mid-toned paper. It helps me see those tones, those lights and darks, even at the very first stages. So now as I'm refining the shapes a bit more, you can see I've gone to Carbothello. Again, just slightly lighter in tone. I can brush it with my finger just to smooth and soften the edges as well. I'm using pastel matte paper that holds the pastel extremely well, but also allows me to blend with my finger. So best of both worlds. Now I'm starting to use the lighter tones. I'm resting my hand on that piece of paper on the right hand side, that's glassine paper. It's an acid free paper. It's the kind of paper that comes if you buy pastel mat sheets, it's usually protected with this paper. And I'm working flat down on a drawing board just because I can video it and you can get great angles and great uh, close-up such as this without my head in the way. You don't have to work flat, you can work uh, 90 degrees or at a 45 degree angle. This is just better for me so that's why I'm really using that piece of paper to rest my hand and when it's nice and steady I can find I find it easier to put in the details. So you can see not all lines are straight or not many at all, lots of wavy elements following that shape and form as well as I'm coming down going even lighter in tone so a mid-tone pink pit pastel pencil at this stage and now you can really see how I build the layers up from dark to light. That's always been my preferred way of working. So when I tried colored pencils a while ago, I found it very difficult because I come from a, an oil painting background, 20 years oil painting. With oils, it's just like pastels. We work dark to light mainly. And with colored pencils, unless you're using new mediums and um, pa various papers as well, in general, you're working the complete opposite way. And to me, it just makes sense to be able to do what you're actually seeing happening in nature, the highlights sitting on top of the darker under layers. And I personally find it much quicker. Obviously some colored pencil artists will disagree, but I'm just saying what I found myself. Now I'm building up those under those highlight layers on top of the under layers. Got a nice sharp pencil. I'm twirling my pencil as well. If you look at the the writing on the pencil, you see every now and again I'm twirling it around. That's helping me to deposit more clean pastel on the surface, and it's also keeping my pencil tip sharp rather than creating a flat edge. If I held it the same way all the time I would very soon within probably just three or four strokes end up with a flat edge on there. So you see me all the time twirling in between every stroke or two and rotating and twirling that pencil. So I'm going to continue now just to 
add more and more details all the time, gradually going lighter and lighter. And don't forget also with a pencil, you can apply it very, very gently and get a less distinct mark. So you don't have to keep swapping pencils all the time. And I'm doing that now as I'm blending back from the light into the dark. And already I think that's starting to look quite realistic. I've got some more refinement to do. I've got to bring the details up in that bottom right hand section as well. Now the background that you can just see behind, I'm keeping that uh, not as detailed because I want the head the, and the face, the eyes to be the real center of interest. So I deliberately blended out that background of the body, not put in as much detail so that things like the eyes, the ears will all look more three dimensional, look like they're coming forward in the artwork. And you can see as well that generally I'm pulling the pencil towards me, working from areas that are further away, overlapping them as they come in closer towards myself. And now as I'm adding even lighter tones, the real bright highlights, you can see the thickness is starting to come together, that depth of fur, that realism. And you've got to have a solid underlayer. It's very, very important not to skip that section. You don't want to go jumping into details too soon. You need to have that solid foundation which as I said, I find the easiest way to do that is pan pastels, but also on my Patreon channel, I show various ways. Um, you, I've got drawing tutorials for complete beginners for the very first time to pick up a pastel, the supplies that uh, people should buy. And then I've got tutorials such as a tiger for absolute beginners. And all I'm using there is probably about 12 or 15 pencils and I list the exact pencils that I'm using. And that gives people the opportunity to, to try out pastels for a very small amount of money. Like I said, about 12 or 15 pencils, one piece of paper. And uh, you can try it out and see if you really like pastels yourself. And then I've got more demos that go more and more advanced all the way up to this snow leopard. I've got a very realistic elephant baby on there and orangutan. There's lots and lots of different subjects. But on this video I really wanted to show you the basics of building layers with pastels and getting fine detail as well.
So now for this section, it's just about refinement. I've still got a bit of work to do on this, and I come back to that later in the full length video to add just that last bit of um, color toning and glazing in, in areas. But I think this gives you a good idea of, of how I've layered and detailed this section up. Now, paper is critical. If you don't use a sanded type of paper, you're not going to be able to get these layers and I've tried out and tested lots and lots of different papers so far I've spent a lot of my own money buying papers and checking which ones are suited the most to my particular style and detailing and I show those videos on my YouTube channel they go into a great deal of detail on why I pick certain papers but to cut a long story short Clairefontaine pastel matte so far has been by far the best paper that I've used. There are plenty of other types that um, you can get lots of detail with as well. So if you can't get that, you can still do my techniques. And I show also on YouTube how you can even make um, a, a similar paper yourself very inexpensively that will also take lots and lots of layers. It's not quite as good as pastel matte as you'd expect. But, um, you, you know, you can still produce very good drawings, even making the paper yourself. So as I put in a few more details, hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've picked up a few tips and techniques and I'll see you all again real soon. If you're looking for even more great art sources I've really got you covered. First off I've got a Patreon channel that's been going well over a year or so packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long so you can see they're really really in-depth subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus. That comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com. And they will be copyright free for you. So you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.